Snastruck! We've looked at Mega Man 4, Mega Man 5, now let's take a look at Mega Man 6, the last game of the series on NES which was released in March of 1994, a few months after Mega Man X hit the Super Nintendo. So yeah, at the time, people were kind of over the NES Mega Man series for the most part, partly because of burnout, I mean this is the sixth game of essentially the same thing, and because people were just ready to move on to something bigger, faster, and more advanced. I mean, Mega Man X was freaking incredible for the time, and it still is today, so it's understandable why something like Mega Man X would be largely ignored. But just like the fourth and fifth games, Mega Man 6 is still a perfectly good action platformer that fits in with the series just fine. I personally don't think it's as good as 2 or 3 or even 5, but it's still a very good game on its own. Let's start out and list all the things different in 6, so you know what you're in for here. First, Rush isn't a dog anymore, but a suit you can wear. There's a jetpack and a power adapter which you use to blast through larger obstacles in your way. You can use each in intermittent bursts, and the energy bar automatically replenishes. It's kind of like flying in Gargoyles Quest 2, another Capcom NES title. Beat the Bird is back too, and you still have to collect letters, this time it's only four, spelling out beat. This time, however, you find the letters by going down alternate paths that lead to alternate bosses, similar to the way you can find and fight Surges, Violin, and Agile in Mega Man X2. This aspect is fun if you're into 100% runs and if you're a completionist type, but ultimately the beat stuff is kind of pointless, and it's not at all necessary to beat the game. That's about it for differences. I mean, they did leave a couple things out from the previous game, like the M-Tanks, but that's it. There's not too much that's unique here in Mega Man 6, so yeah, it's easy to skip this one. There is an interesting bit of trivia here, though. This batch of Robot Masters was submitted by fans. There were over 200,000 submissions from all around the world. Then six from Japan were chosen, and two from North America were chosen. Some of these are pretty cool, like Nightman and Centaur Man, but stuff like Wind Man and Flame Man are just rehashes of previous bosses, and Blizzard Man. I mean, this guy just looks kind of ridiculous on his little skis. Anyway, you guys are probably sick of me harping on the boss weapons in these videos, but hey, they're what make Mega Man Mega Man, you know? So the better the boss weapons, the more fun it's going to be. The weapons in Mega Man 6 aren't that bad, so to speak. They're just derivative of weapons we've already seen. Of course, that's understandable since this is the sixth game in the series, and I will say Nightman's weapon is pretty cool, as well as Tomahawk Man's, but there's another Flash Man type weapon, Wind Man weapons is practically the same as Air Man's, Flame Man's weapon is reminiscent of Heat Man's, on and on. Like I said, they're still alright, Right, but there's no new ground being covered at all anymore. A similar sentiment could be said about the level design. There's the token ice level, the token water level, you get the idea. I do like the split paths, that's an interesting touch, and there are some really cool ideas here, like the upside down water in Centaur Man's level that affects your jumping, or Flame Man stage here, where there's pits of oil that get lit on fire and lead to an instant death if you're not careful. Those parts are pretty cool. It's just that, like I said, there's not a whole lot of new stuff here. So yeah, to sum up, of course Mega Man 6 is an bad game, it's just clear that the NES series had run out of steam at this point. I do think 6 is better than 4, but I think I prefer 5 over 6, personally. I just think overall, if you've played 1 through 5, or even if you've only played a couple Mega Man NES games, you're really not missing a whole lot if you haven't played Mega Man 6. It's still a fantastic action platformer, but it's probably the least essential of the 6 games. 